Dapper Don Podcast. It is your boy Dapper Don Dez. I'm here to discuss today the destructive nature of young artists. That young artists who have so much potential and so much skill, but yet seem to find themselves in in a place of not knowing how to deal with these newfound things. We're talking about the self-destructive nature of young artists from the baby's explosive temper to the slow burn of Post Malone's drug addiction. To not having privacy on a private jet to even the death of a young up-and-coming superstar. We we oftentimes just expect in hip-hop that these young artists are going to know exactly how to make themselves a accessible enough to be safe but also enough to not find yourself in a place where you're being used manipulated and just all around taken advantage of and that brings me to my first topic i want to talk about the baby i want to start off with the baby here's the reason why i want to start it with the baby the baby seems to be having a long run with these violent issues with people i'm not sure if it makes him well, he's definitely responsible. There's a degree of being responsible. There has to be a certain level of responsibility taken on your end. This isn't just happening to you. It's happening... I mean, it's not just happening to, happening to you once or twice. It's happening so often that we, after a while, have to take into consideration why so much of this is happening to you. What is it that comes from your end? So when I'm wondering exactly what's going on, I look at, I, I look at maybe necessarily your upbringing. You know, you definitely had run-ins with the law. You've had, you've had difficult situations in life. The reason why we kind of maybe a little harder on baby than it is anybody else, because when we listen to you, we can hear articulate. We can hear that you're smart. We can hear that you can think through a situation. So, why am I finding you constantly getting into it with the valet? You beat up a dude in the middle of Louis Vuitton, knocked him out his drawers. Your bodyguard slapped people. You slapping people. It feels like every other month you getting active. I understand you got to get active because we see a lot of issues. And we used to see this with our artists like Waka Flocka, Gucci Man, but that's not the one that really come to mind when I think about artists like, uh, like the baby. But first, let me tell you, let me tell you his latest adventures let's just go into what his latest adventures is he just got into it with a woman who apparently while at a tampa show and i believe what is the whiskey north or something along those lines that's the name of the nightclub but it's out there in tampa florida and in tampa florida which is funny why why these artists coming down to florida beating on our women i i, I couldn't tell you they're a little maybe they're i don't know maybe they're a little more aggressive than other women i can't tell you but anyway he ended up slapping a woman who apparently, I guess, he felt disrespected or took or took a very aggressive measures into how she decided to videotape him. That he smacked that she smacked him in the phone. So this is what she said happened. He smacked her. She she smacked him in the face with the phone. And he said because the light was so bright and he couldn't see who was on the other end when he decided to get active because the baby do get active we know this much he didn't know it was a woman on the other end he said he would have handled it differently but i guess he just felt like it was a fan and he just slapped um i don't know if he would slap a guy i'm gonna say that i'm gonna call a spade a spade i don't know if he would have slapped a man had it been a guy that hit you i think that guy would have left in an ambulance I think you very much knew it was a woman. I think you looked at her a few times. But, you know, that's just how the baby give it up. I'm sure that's his natural energy. And the fact is, this dude just finds himself in trouble. And it's the weirdest stuff because he seems to have a business mind. He seems to be business oriented. He's very intelligent, but it feels like, to a point, is he just throwing bricks and hiding his fingers? I have to start asking these questions. So, basically... That's who was involved, the baby and another unnamed woman so far. Well, and as far as why the woman hit him, the woman might most likely hit him because she was attempting to record him 
because they were he was on stage and this was you know a normal thing people want to get a good close up even though he made a very good point that you can simply zoom in now why she decided not to zoom in that's all on her i couldn't tell you i can't tell you where her logic was at when she decided that it would have been a better idea for her to smack him in the face with the phone clearly it wasn't clearly it wasn't a good investment of your uh uh, of your time and effort because he clapped back and that's what these street dudes man you gotta think about that with these street dudes they're, they're a little wide different they gonna move a little different than say a square like myself or somebody else you know they gonna get active it's just how that works but it brings me to the likeness because we are talking on self-destruct and in, in this episode of after i self-destruct i think of one artist who fits this bill I'm talking was so hot it felt like he could do no wrong he was just the man and the, there was no doubt that this brother was the person to talk to when it came to hit records that was kevin gates from two phones to really really like he had a platinum record he didn't need features he didn't need to play nice with others he just had that certain vibe he seemed like he could go outside the rules or the norm of how business is done these days but guess what even kevin gates eventually had to bow down to the reality that everybody moves by rules and this is where he got himself out of here when uh when he kicked old girl down in florida i forget where it was in florida but anyway just like in florida kevin gates came down here and he kicked a woman apparently for constantly touching his uh private parts whatever but you still kicked her and your arrogance was so crazy and it was like all right that's the last straw with you because you you keep doing this and doing this this affects your brand and he didn't seem to be taking these court situations serious and it feels like also with the baby i don't think the baby's really taking these courts here these are our courts here in series either i think they feel like they got enough money to buy it that is all petty it's all small stuff it's all whatever it get big after a while it does because if you look at Kevin, he hasn't been the same since. So if I'm looking at one trajectory, I would advise the baby to look at uh, artists like Kevin Gates, who still is equally talented. He dropped an album called I'm Him, Kevin Gates. He dropped an album called I'm Him. One of the best albums to drop last year. Didn't get nowhere near the acclaim because guess what? I don't feel like I can invest in you, especially when I see you in the courtroom sleeping. You do realize there's years on the table. Yeah, you may not care if you go to jail. But what about the millions that was invested in you? What about everybody who gave an opportunity to you? How are they supposed to recoup? I would find the baby. I would take that in consideration. That's just what I would say. I would take that into consideration. But it's one thing to attack other people. It's another thing to attack yourself. And another artist who has been really on the verge of self-destruction and really on the verge of just really just on, on the verge of going down a dark slope it's post malone i want to talk about the concerns that his fans have towards his drug usage when his twitter fans say he clearly has a problem when these people gonna realize enough is enough that this isn't normal for post malone um Another one said he's clearly not doing this for fun anymore. He's abusing these drugs. That's an interesting one. I've never heard using drugs for fun versus abuse. I figured all use of drugs was abuse, but whatever. Anyway, they're pretty much saying uh, his fans, or at least just onlookers, are concerned about his, I guess not just his health and use of drugs but also the what mental space he's in because he was just talking to gq and he had a conversation with gq about if uh why he has the tattoos on his face he says that it comes from insecurity he says that it comes from the fact that he thought he was an ugly mother effer and that he wanted somebody he wanted to look in the mirror and say hey this is a cool guy so he scribbled all over his face now i remember when mike tyson when he got a face tat we all thought mike tyson was wilding with his face tat but I think I kind of prefer the one big face tag over these little small scribblings. The little small scribblings is like, why? It doesn't even, it, whatever. You know, because Wayne really started that. It's like you're kind of inching into it. You just inch into it, just a little small scribble after a little small scribbles. For you know, you got a face full of scribbles. At least you can have a picture. 
if you had a picture, I would say, man, that's a, that's a picture. That's a thing. You got a tribal art. That's a warrior tattoo. Now when I look at Mike Tyson, guess what? It looks hard as fuck in his 50s. It looks hard. That's a tough picture. You feel me? That's a real tough picture. I like it. But uh, we talking about post drugs addiction. Post has now been finding himself in the midst of all of these drama and all, all, all of these, uh, well, not, not necessarily too much drama, but just the, the fame of life and uh, whatever it clearly seems like he's going through. And because he's going through this, his fans feel like his drugs is affecting him. But Post decided to respond. He decided to not just let this blow under and said that I don't take drugs. I feel really good in life. I feel effing fantastic, you know, blase, blase. I don't have too much of an issue. Now, they're saying that is this a normal factor for uh, Post Malone? Meaning the way he's carrying himself on stage, you see him being disoriented, you see him being really high or just having these real issues. And I think that as far as his fans go, they see so much rock stars, they see so many rock stars lose their life to these drugs, you know, these drug addictions that they're more aware of pointing at a situation, right? Because if this was like a black artist, I don't think when Wayne was clearly having seizures and drug problems, I didn't really see this same, hey, get this guy some help. I didn't see that. I didn't see outrage from us. But when it comes to Post, it clearly seems like his our fans, his fans seem to have a real concern about him and his well-being as a human being. And I think that that's amazing because when you look at Mac Miller, Mac Miller was, was where his last breakfast interview, he's like, nah, I got everything under control. I'm not doing no heavy drugs. Everything's cool. Everything's fine. And boom, Mac's gone. And this is what I mean by when I say after I self-destruct. Who's help? Who's there to help you pick up the pieces? Who's there when it's so far gone? Who's there when it comes down to it? Because Mac, Mac died alone, I believe. I don't know. I don't think there was nobody in that building, in that uh, room with him. Mac died alone. How That's sad. A man with so much followers, a man with so many people who loved him to die alone. And I think for people to speak out now, I don't believe they would have did that with Guns N' Roses. I don't believe they would have did that with Metallica. I don't believe they would have did that with any other rock band. I think now we're in a more aware space of where these artists are and that they're human beings. He's clearly not in the same mental space or at least a healthy mental space. That's what it comes off as. I don't know. I... Like I said, I'm not a Post fan. I never was a fan of Post. I wasn't a fan. To me, he's like the new kid rock. I wasn't never really into that bending genres, you know, because most of those people who bend genres, they very rarely have respect for the hip hop genre. They use just rock stars who want a, you know, a, a little edge, a little edge. But you know. It's that world. Everybody has a right to do it how they want to do it. But, uh, yeah, so they posted up videos of Post Malone and, and his drug addiction. He says he's fine. He scribbles on his face because he kind of feels bad about how he looks. But, you know, such is life. Such is life. I, I hope he's good. I'm pretty sure he's good. I doubt Post is in a space where he feels like he's going to just take from himself, you know. But you gotta, you gotta actually, you at least have to listen to the people around you. They have an outside view of you. You might feel like you got it under control. It might seem like it's under control. It's easy for something that's out of control to feel like it's in control. That's normal. That's a normal part of life. But all for Post Malone and into, into another mindset. So let's say you're doing everything you're supposed to do. You got this money. You're doing exactly what you're supposed to do. You, you're taking care of your family, you're taking care of your business. But what about when just the space that you're in and how other people who look like you and sound like you, especially as black people, let's just be honest, this is how this works. When one of us gets into a tough position, when one of us gets into a very, uh, a very compromising, uh, how would I say this? Not, not in the... One of us makes a mistake, 
it feels like all of us equally better burden. And the reason I say this is because it brings me into my next topic. Mink Mills posted up a video on his Instagram story of his private jet. That's right, his private jet being searched, them pulling the bags out, them, uh, when I say them, I believe it was, this was in Miami. So this might have been Miami PD. I don't know who has authority to check your bags. I don't know if it would have to be a federal thing. I would imagine Miami would be a type of city that would be very strict on their clear ports. But I wouldn't imagine that it would have been for rappers. But with the with uh with what happened with Juice World, I wonder if that's what's affecting this Mink Mills. Because in Mink Mills' case, he was saying that they were being targeted because they're black, that this was really racial profiling. To be racial profiling in a plane is crazy. To be racially profiled in a plane is crazy. To have no privacy on a private jet is nuts. I thought it was because I was poor, right? I thought that's why they was messing with us. Who who profiles you on a private jet? But that's why I say I wanted if Juice World because Juice World wasn't the first rapper to, you know, dibble and dabble in the streets and, you know, have his thing, you know, have have his thing in the culture. But Juice World was the first one that I can think of that got caught trying to move 70 pounds. He was the plug, the plug. He had to be flying in from Cali. He could stand to make a pretty penny too. Cause let's say he got the the pounds, this is Cali Kush, right? He flying his back to Chicago. If you got it for five and you sell it for 10, and that's 70, that's a $350,000 profit. That's a $350,000 profit. But, you know, uh, the pilot wasn't with it. 70 pounds, that's a lot, bro. He was trying to make a flip-flip. He should have put that on his tour bus. I would have sent that tour bus right back. I wouldn't have did it, but, you know, that tour bus would have been going right back to the city. It'll meet you there. Don't meet me there, beat me there. One, all the way, no stop. Buy a school bus and put it on there. Who pulls over a school bus? Nobody ever pulled over a school bus, ever. Anyway, that's all the way off the topic of what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Ming Mills uh, having his private plane be searched, being searched and uh, and, and, and berated on the clipboard. The young boy? Do the young boy like that? Not the dream chaser? The dream chaser money maker? Come on, dragging his bags out all all out on the ground, he putting on the stories. He like, bruh, the ops on us, the cops on us, this ain't nothing. I fly PJs, but it's crazy because he really do fly PJs. I thought that was kind of cap. But anyway, his next Instagram story was him going up to some pop smoke on the PJ. So I guess it's just maybe a little small road bump, but uh, most of us, when we get profiled, but they I guess they was looking for drugs. I guess they was looking for guns. Um. Okay. I I don't know how common that is. And if you're going to stop and check my plane anyway. Oh, but, but, but yeah, yeah, now I remember. Got off topic. Do you believe that this is because of the fact that he has his prison reform? Is his prison reform the reason why he's getting profiled like he's getting profiled? Because you remember they got Robert Kraft last year the year before last outside of some massage parlor right now you was like this this is a weird thing you don't really hear about this with the nfl uh owners they're very powerful men i think and i got a theory everybody got theories i got a theory i don't know anybody involved i don't this is just me kind of having a theory this prison reform thing has some real weight to it and the people who are jumping in it the Michael Rubens, the Robert Kraft, the Jay Z's, these people are powerful enough to actually make this happen. Because if you ever notice, most billionaires don't get involved in stuff like this. You see Kim K get involved in it, but Kim K goes through maybe the right channels. They did what they did. The Robert Kraft on some massage parlor, he probably go there all the time. If this was regular, they would have waited if they had like um whoever i guess atf customs whoever handles sex trafficking i think i bet you if they were 
if they were stinging that joint, they would wait for him to leave. Just because you wouldn't want to ruin your fight. You wouldn't want to ruin your case by implicating a man powerful enough to, to take the whole thing down. So just let's let him leave. I think it was set up because they were showing him like, you go against us, we go against you. And I believe that's what Mink going through right now. I think he's really seeing, because you got to think about it. If you get a million people off probation, right? Let's say that millions of people who you just got off probation, they've all paid $2,000. If they pay $2,000, what's that? 200, 200 million. So that's 2 billion. That's 2 billion. If each one just pays $2,000, that's $2 billion worth of money you're taking out of somebody's pocket. And not only that, you're not only just taking what is there, but you're taking off of what's supposed to come next. Meaning the young men that you are helping stay out of the system, regardless of race, regardless of anything, just talking pure money at this point. Because I know in a minute a black guy start talking racism, people turn you off. So let's just take that out of it. Let's just talk money and business. If you taking that much food out of my plate, I'm going to have something to say about it. I'm going to have an issue with it. You, you ruining what I got going on. You stepping on my plate, Robert. Not stepping, you stepping on my toes, Robert. I know you. I know where you be at. And I'm going to show you I know where you be at. It feel like Robert Kraft kind of fell back from that prison reform, huh? You know, but good thing Mink moving careful. He's not doing stupid, you know. He didn't have a pound in the Draco and whatever else. He clearly moving smart. He put all that on the tour bus. <laughs> Had a tour bus meet me. The tour bus bring all the Dracos. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, R.P. Juice World, I do believe to an extent that, uh, that these artists have to realize it's not as much privacy on a private jet as you think it is. I wonder if they bang the stories. I'm pretty sure you can. I mean, it's a PJ in the day. How would they know? Is that a camera on PJs? Anyway, whatever that happened, whatever happens. RP Juice World, Mink Move Safe. All you brothers out here flying private, especially when you getting out here to Miami. You know, don't let them Queen and Slim you. Remember how they had Queen and Slim at the airport out there in Miami? I think that was Miami, right? Yeah, I ain't gonna let, ain't gonna ruin the movie for you, but don't let them do you like Queen of Slim at the clipboard. Left Queen of Slim on that tarmac. Spoiler alert. <laughs> they left Queen of Slim on the tarmac, you hear me? But that brings me to the next point. That brings me to my next, my next uh, uh, revelation. Mink got off easy in comparison to Pop Smoke, right? Because what I mean by got off easy is right place, wrong time is a crazy thing. Right place, wrong person. That's really what Pop Smoke's situation was. He was where he was supposed to be. I don't think he has, and some people say, oh, you post this or this the watch I got and that leads to your death. We're, just, we're victim blaming. We're definitely victim blaming. How is it that you're, how is it that I ride private jets or oh, where that comes with flying private? Or if I got a million dollar watch, hundred thousand dollar watch and I got it on, I'm showing it off on Instagram, I'm asking for trouble. That's not only not fair, that's illogical. Then what, where's the line? Because everybody's, Everybody has opulence to somebody. Everybody has more than enough or too much in comparison to somebody. Somebody feels like you have more than enough. Your car might be excessive. Your, your jewelry might be excessive. Your wedding ring might be excessive. Your house might be excessive. And if someone breaks into it, you wouldn't say, oh, man, I got to go move in a worse house. You get carjacked, you don't say, oh, I got to buy a worse car. You realize that it's wrong, that it happened to you. We have to do the same thing for these people, too. It's not right what's happening to them. It's not right how they're being treated. I refuse to, to take anything less than, 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 that, uh, than that mindset. But it's good that even when that does happen, even after 
I wouldn't call pot smoke self destruction, but that there is a bright side to it. That after all of that, after all the drama, after all the, uh, I, I I guess after all all the tragedies, some good comes from it. And what I'm talking about is Fifty Cent executive producing. Fifty Cent executive producing Pop Smoke's new album. Pop Smoke's new album uh, is supposed to be dropping in May. And he's getting, ironically, Post Malone. He's getting Roddy Rich. He's even getting Drake. Like, he's really pulling out all the stops with Pop Smoke. And, and this is an amazing thing. But this was already known. That's pretty old news. The thing he kind of revealed while posting up a picture, which is sad, of Pop Smoke being driven through Brooklyn, which I will say this. Man, these rappers are getting some good funerals. I know that sounds like such a contradiction, but this is what it looks like when you rep your city and you keep it real, though. You look at Nipsey, Nipsey got, you would have thought Pac just died. Nip brought the city out. Boy, they drove Nip through the whole city. It was a beautiful thing. And he sold out the Staples Center. <sighs> He sold out the Staples Center, man. I don't think that's something that we should be looking down on. Well, anyway, Pop Smoke, while 50 Cent was posting Pop Smoke's uh, Instagram pics, while he put under the caption, he had a wish. Pop Smoke had a wish that he could take his mother to an award show. 50 Cent, he is guaranteeing you. He is guaranteeing that... This new Pop Smoke album is going to get his mother to an award show. So that leads me to question to ask you. You think he's going to get a Grammy? They gave Nip one after he passed. But there was a lot of people who felt like uh, Victory Lap was already Grammy. You know, was our, one Victory Lap was Grammy nominated. These people felt like that should have been rap album of the year. That was people who felt that way. So if he's already making Grammy nominated music when he passes, before he passes, then that makes it a little more easier, right? Especially because he made Racks in the Middle. That was something. That wasn't a post modern record. He made and released that. So for that to win a Grammy, that's amazing. But do you think Pop Smoke can win a Grammy? Do you think 50 can clean up an act who still had to learn? He still had things he needed to learn about music. Do you think he's going to still incorporate that UK drill sound? That Pop Smoke used and that Pop Smoke made popular. Because if you putting Post Malone on it, you putting Roddy Rich on it, you putting, you know, Drake on it, it sounds like you're making a Well, it don't sound like a 50 cent album for sure. It doesn't sound like a 50 cent album. But it does feel like you're making a, a rel a current sound, right? Like what's currently hot versus what really should be, what will be. You feel me? Pop is what will be. That was his trajectory. He was going to find a new sound. He wasn't the now sound. That's that's just how that goes. I wasn't big on pop. I'm not going to lie to you. But when I'm going back, I'm listening to Welcome to the Party. I'm listening to all these records. I'm like, this is a person who, you know, a few South by Southwesters. A, a couple, you know, Music Matter tours. I don't even know if BT still do those. A few BT ciphers, you know, a, a couple opening, open up some big tours with some big artists. I think he could have really honed the sound if he would have got around it. But if you're making an album that sounds for already has successful sounds on it, it's what your EP is what an executive producer is supposed to do. They're supposed to find beats for you. They're supposed to find exclusive artists for you. They're supposed to find all of these things for you. So, but when my question is, it I don't know if I'm articulating it right. Do you believe that 50 can make Pop Smoke a Grammy nominatable album off of what Pop Smoke has already done? Can he polish this up enough? Because I, I think I listened to Meet the Woes. It was cool. Meet the Woo. I listened to it. I don't think it's a Grammy nominated. I can't imagine Meet the Woos 2 being too much more different. But that's not necessarily fair. Because you look at Dream Chasers 1 versus Dream Chasers 2. It was a significant difference. So if you look at uh, the 
the warm up in comparison to Friday Night Lights, it was a significant difference. So yeah, you can definitely change in a whole mixtape. In the span of one mixtape, you can definitely change. But do you believe that 50 can make a Grammy nominated album with what he has to work with already? And is throwing and sprinkling a bunch of what's already hot on top of Pop Smoke's projects a smart idea? Will it mesh well? Is that too many shells? Do too many shells spoil the broth? Is this really a good idea? You know, that that's the type of stuff that I that I think that you know that I think has to be taken into consideration. How's Roddy Rich and Pop Smoke going jail well? I you know I think about that. I think, but but you know at the same time I have to give fifty. Uh, a lot of credit. I have to give Fifty a lot of, uh, a lot of um, a lot of reverence because Young Buck was a good Southern rap album, right? Lloyd Banks was a good New York album that didn't sound exactly like him. That's tough. That's that that is tough because I'm you working with the same people I'm working with, you rapping on the same beats as me, you coming up under me, but yet you make something that sounds different. Hunger for More didn't sound like. Uh, get rich or die trying, which is funny because a lot of people who had nothing to do with Fifty Cent was sounding a lot like Fifty Cent around that time. You know, Lloyd had a lot more singing going on. He did a lot more hooks. He was a lot more lyrical. So, I bring that up just to bring up what other albums have Fifty done. Um, the massacre didn't sound anything like. Get Rich or Die Trying. So, I didn't listen to Olivia's album. I'm trying to think of albums that 50 has done or worked with where they were so polar opposite in what he offers because he would have to have versatility. Executive producer, to what executive producer had, you got to have versatility. I like the records. Every record he got with Jeremiah is hot, but every record Jeremiah put out is hot. That I uh, still think I'm nothing. That was a hard record. I think I slept on that song. That song got slept on. That was a crazy good song. Um, but yeah, do you think that he can... And he just said an award show. He didn't say a Grammy. I'm putting Grammy on it. I do believe he can win a BET award. I believe that. And that's not knocking BET. That's, not, that's a very prestigious award to say that you came into the culture and did something big for the culture. Because, matter of fact, that's just the same. Unless you win rap album, I mean, album of the year, or artist of the year, or something where you compete with the whole genre, I think it's better to win a hip hop award at a hip hop award show than to win a hip hop award at an award show that doesn't honor hip hop. Business doesn't look at it like that, I'm sure. I'm sure it's better to have a Grammy regardless if it says best rap album, best rap performance, best uh, solo artist, whatever the case is. It's better just to say it's a Grammy. I mean, right? It's like a Kardashian. You get the ugliest Kardashian, but it's still a Kardashian. So I, I'm assuming that's how that logic works. That line of logic that people just want a Grammy for the sake of having a Grammy. I'm not jacking Grammys like that for real, but do you think that he can produce a Grammy with an artist that I don't believe had been polished enough to get a Grammy off his own merit just yet. Like I said, a few more South by Southwest, a few more, uh, you know, a few more radio runs, getting there with some locking with some real producers. I definitely think we, we had a star on our hands. That's for sure. I'm not saying he wasn't, but do you think that fifth can turn this brother into a, into a superstar? Post mortem super can he Tupac him? Even that ain't even really Tupac in him. Cause Pac dropped all eyes on me before he died. That's tough. That's like being Dr. Dre and turning that's a good example. That would be like Dr. Dre having to take strictly for my N words and turn that into all eyes on me. You can't. That artist has to go through certain things, they have to build the story. It have to, a lot has to happen. You know, you can't take Cardi's gangster B-word album, mixtape, Cardi's mixtapes and make Invasion of Privacy. She had to make those mixtapes first, then 
comes invasion of privacy. That's how that has to work, in my opinion. Maybe you can just throw a big name on an artist, and that's it. Another act that I thought about, though, and, and this is just before I get out of here, another act that I thought about was Megan Thee Stallion. That's right, because the reason I was thinking about Meg the Stallion is what, what within her whole discography would I look at and say, this is her hottest song? Big Old Freak was a breakthrough record, but I don't know if that's, his hot, if that's her hottest song. The reason I asked this in this episode of After I Self Destruct is, is she self destructed? Because I listen to. Jay Prince's explanation. Now, Jay Prince's explanation is very interesting explanation. What makes this explanation so interesting that he's saying that as independent artists, that we, not independent artists, independent labels, you build the artists, you build the artists, you build the artists, you work hard, you invest all of this. And then, like I said last week, a major comes to you, like Rock, like Rock Nation, comes to you and says, uh, do you know how much it's coming out of your check. You know how much you're worth. Do you know how much this, that, and the third? It's divide and conquer. Now, I don't see how you you say, I want to be in the vein of a Pimp C, and you getting vocals from Pimp C, you getting all of this opportunity and, and all this admiration that came from working with Paul Crawford and Jay Prince. When he said he was throwing hundreds of thousands on you. And yeah, he was an MLB, MLB artist, but not a damn MLB artist, a MLB player. He's a major league baseball player. So just to give a rundown for y'all who don't know what I'm talking about, because I should at least explain it to those who don't know. Meg Thee Stallion is signed to a record label. I think I said 1051 last time, 1015 last time. I think it's 5110 now. 1051. Let's go there. I think it's 1051. Whatever. Carl, Carl Crawford. Anyway, he comes up. He comes up with this record label. He signs Meg the Stallion for, uh, gives her 10 grand in her pocket. So she says, but then he says he gave her another 50. So that's 60,000. On top of the hundreds of thousands that, that uh, he spun. Here's why, and then, and, and then they're asking Jada Kiss about it. Oh, Jada, how do you feel? And he's like, "Well, that sounds like what we was getting." Here's what they're not getting: when you sign to these independent labels, he make a good point. You're building with the artist. After I invest the money, and I put up all the cash, and I put up everything, all I'm asking you to do is pay back the engineer. Cause I gotta pay the engineer before they recorded you. I gotta pay for everything. So you pay all of that back. That comes out to your percentage. Everything that you recorded, all that other stuff. Cause I gotta make back, then we're gonna split up the pie like this. But guess what? It's not enough room for 1051, for Rock Nation, and for 300. Rock Nation is just simply saying, you got to cut somebody out if you want us in here. That's what I feel. You got to cut somebody else out. I don't believe Rock Nation is us saving grace. I believe Rock Nation is going to be the same. It's the same song and dance, lady. The minute you get platinum, because trust me, the minute you go platinum, because right now you at hot mixtape status, you trying to hit platinum. Once you hit platinum, you're going to want to get rid of Rock Nation. And guess what? It's going to be an even bigger fight from there on out. You just, I think when Jay Prince explained it, hold up, man. I'm, I'm finna pull it up real quick. I'm finna pull it up. Edit point A. Hold up, man.
All right, so here's what I have right here. I have the problems between Meg and Crawford began after Meg said her label wouldn't allow her to release new music because she wanted to renegotiate her contract. She also said that Crawford used Prince to intimidate people in the music business. Houston, we have a problem, wrote Prince next to a photo of himself with Crawford. Meg, along with Rock Nation employee, I'm just going to say Grace Liar, decided to include my name in a lawsuit wrapped around lies and stupidity. We're going to get this ish straight. Ooh. The Roots is a familiar one for me, coming from a successful independent record label perspective. That's what I was talking about. Him being, he was the owner of Rap A Lot. I don't know if y'all know about Rap A Lot. Rap A Lot brought you uh, Ghetto Boys. And I believe he had a lot to do with UGK. Like, it was, it was a real big thing. And that eventually led to Trill Entertainment, one of my favorite record labels, by the way. And uh, he just talked about, well, I'm, I'm going to let him, uh, I'm going to keep reading. Then, you know, I'm going to give you my little breakdown. But that's that's why I say he's a very interesting part. Because he's also known for being, like, I guess the Shook Knight of the South. Although nobody seems to be able to name, you know, his Vanilla Ice situation. You know how, like, Shook held Vanilla Ice outside of a outside the window or dangled him by the feet, whatever the case was supposed to have been. Well, apparently he never had, I, we can't find one situation where Jay Prince did that. I can't. I remember who my guy is. Ball player, man. Ball player, ball player, ball player. I forget his name. But he got his chain snapped vicious outside of a show one day. This was back in like 2015. I, I know you're going to know who I'm talking about. The minute I said, but I think he played for the Houston Rockets at a certain point. And he got his chain stashed vicious. And Jay Prince was on video the next day, like, hey, here's your chain. You know, you can come pick it up. We got you here, baby. Ooh, boom, 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 whatever. So, you know, he's an OG, I suppose. I shall continue, though. We as independent labels make many sacrifices along with our artists. After we do all the hard work together with artists, it's a known fact that major record labels and established managers attempt to the the approach the the poach the fruit of our labors. Prince said that one of the ways larger labels Prince said that one of the ways larger labels and management teams try to take artists from independent companies is to find fault with the artist's deal. He explains that it's something that record labels in New York and Los Angeles tried to do with his artists on rap a lot records in the past which he stopped prince who has been called a close friend and mentor to crawford while meg reportedly referred to prince as crawford's partner in her lawsuit then backed what crawford said earlier this week in the response to meg that she really didn't want to negotiate her contract and her handler only gave the label deals only gave labels the demands get labeled demands for the record, we have no problem with negotiating with Meg, but we do have a problem with dictators, wrote Prince. I find it very interesting that Rock Nation, which manages Meg, will allow their employee to sign an affidavit and statement fill the slanderous lies on, on my methods in doing business when we have partnered together on several occasions. That's interesting. That's interesting. This is, I brought this up last week. This is before he even said this. I brought this up last week. There's always two sides to every story. I don't know if he's been 100% honest now. I, I mean, I don't know what his case is, but he also is behind Drake, so. He clearly still has a touch. Do you feel like he's an underrated mogul? Leave that comment in the comment section. I'm going to continue to read on. I find it very interesting that Rock Nation, blah, 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 which managed me with allowing my methods doing business and have partnered together on several occasions. He added, I don't think Jay-Z is aware of this, but only time will tell. Prince then gave his opinion on how he perceives Meg and her recording contract. Meg seems to be a perfect candidate for all self-destruction. That's why she's on Halftime Self-Destruct. That's why I named this episode, by the way is the perfect candidate for self-destruction he wrote any artist in the music industry will testify that 40 percent profit shares a great deal especially for an unestablished artist that to this day has never delivered an album in the past 
In the last part of his message, Prince brought up Meg's late mother and former manager, Holly Thompson. Thomas, who passed away from a brain tumor, which Meg confirmed on Instagram in March of 2019. I give credit to what credit is due, he stated. Meg, along with her mother, who evidently could read God Rest Her Soul, negotiated a great deal, a good deal. The home he called was an angel in Meg's eyes when he was spending hundreds of thousands investing in her career, added Prince. Now that he's helped her become a successful artist, she stopped paying him his percentages and view him as the devil. Meg responded with facts are facts and facts are public. I'm extremely pleased that 1501 and Carl Thomas were den I'm extremely pleased that 1501 and Carl Thomas were denied the request to dissolve the court's orders and try to stop my music from being released. I I will proceed with the release of Sugar. Meg began, I will stand up for myself and won't allow two men to bully me. I'm no one's property. <laughs> what? All right, I don't know. Damn, I don't drop my phone hard enough. Thing reset. All right, I heard enough. I heard enough. Okay, but how you been bullied? How you been bullied? What is this? This is my thing about female rappers right now, right? And it really feels like I'm bullying female rappers. I swear I'm not. Why the minute things get tough, you start blaming it like dudes is sexist? No, we had a deal. Now you're trying to renege on a deal. Let me see. Let me see if I can if I can pull this back up, man. This is crazy. She says, I refuse to be bullied by two men. I'm no one's property. Okay, what they gotta do with you signing a contract? Hold on. All right. So I will stand up for myself and won't allow two men to bully me. I'm no one property, she added. Y'all are choosing to highlight the issues of music splits, talking about everything else. That this has nothing to do with anyone else, including Jay Z. Stop deflecting and trying to make this publicity stunt. Earlier this week, a judge granted May a restraining order so she could release her new EP, Sugar. On Friday, Crawford then filed a motion to try to eliminate that order, but judges turned his motion down. So, I mean, at, at that point, I mean, at this point, that's where that's at. I'm not mad at her for standing up for herself, though. She do feel like something isn't right. Is I, I guess I guess whatever But anyway Man uh, I just want to leave you With this word Regardless of If we're talking Meg's You know Meg's uh, Contractual issues Or Post Malone's Issues with uh, With drugs Or Mink in a private jet The main thing That I really want to Get through to it is The the reason I named The title Of this show Is After I Self Destruct Is how do you Put it back together and when do you admit that it's too far? When does the baby admit he has anger issues and what steps will he take before he end up like Kevin Gates? When, when will Post Malone realize that this isn't just fun anymore? And it's not just lighthearted drug uses, but this is a real problem before he ends up like Mac Miller. Is it healthy? Is the decisions that, that Juice World made and his honestly destruction of himself Makes it warranted for other artists such as Ming Mills to be treated this way. Is Meg the Stallion self destructing or just self defense? She's standing up for self or she's standing in her own way? Either way, the most important thing is even after you self destruct, there's always a way back. But you have to swallow that pride. You have to look in the mirror and say that I got to get back on track. That's the most important thing. Until then, it is your boy Dapper Don. There's your tune into the Dapper Don podcast. Yeah.